Captain C. A. Bartlett, the commander of the Britannic, stayed on the bridge giving orders to the officers through his speaking megaphone as the ship was going down under his feet. He not leave until the water lapped over him. The ship was sinking very quickly then, going by the head and listening to starboard, and soon the water came to the bridge. Assistant Commander Dyke, having reported to me that all had left the ship, I told him to leave, and shortly after I followed him. We barely left the bridge, walking into the water by the forward boat gantry on the starboard side. The funnels fell just moments later. One of the quartermasters had gone below early in the sinking to find supplies of bread from the ship's pantries to stop the lifeboats. He came out onto the deck to find the bridge submerged and the ship rapidly dropping in the water. He dropped the bread and leapt into the sea with mere seconds to spare before the vessel had disappeared. When we reached the deck, the foremost of the four funnels was touching the water and the bowels were completely submerged. jumped 80 feet into the sea from the second-class quarters on sea deck, and after swimming clear, we watched the awesome sight of the mighty liner sinking. Assistant Chief Engineer, Joseph Wolfe. sad to watch our ship slowly but surely sinking. We could hear her boilers rumbling off like thunder into the water, and her immense funnels, through which one could have driven a coach and four, were ripped up with as little difficulty as tearing a piece of paper. She sank in only 480 feet of water, and the ship sank almost vertical. It was 890 feet long. She touched the bottom.
I had supervised over the construction and launch of the Britannic, I skippered her, and I watched her founder. To have been able to witness a vessel her whole life, from birth to death, is surely a unique circumstance. Captain Charles Bartlett, HMHS Britannic, 21st of November, 1960.